Hello and welcome. So in this video we're going to talk about how we can secure our ASP.NET Web API uh, web services that we built. So we'll talk a little bit about security. And security is a big topic. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we can do with security. We're going to start out with a really simple case of simply um, making sure that whoever calls our API is using what we call an API key. What that means is they have to provide in the header a key um, and will only allow things through with that. This is useful if you're exposing your API to public use. You can hand out keys to different people so that you can track um, which person's calling you, for example. You could also do this through user accounts, but we'll start out with a simple case of the API key. Now, API keys are not the best way to um, make everything secure, but they solve this one particular case where you're just trying to uh, keep people that you don't want uh, to hit your API hitting it. So let's start by looking at some security here. We have our set of web services here and we have a request that comes in. What we'd like to do is introduce a security layer here and the, the, so that the request has to go through the security in order to get to the web service. We also want that security layer to send back a blocked response if uh, there's a failure in the authentication or authorization or in this case if the key doesn't match we're going to just say no nope, you can't come to the site anymore. We also want allowed responses to be able to go back through and flow through that security layer. Now uh, let's talk about cross-cutting concerns. Cross-cutting concerns are things that we want to apply in our code in all cases. So an example may be security. We want to make sure that every endpoint, every REST endpoint that we have is protected and that there is a check that's done on this API key. Well, in or, or, or checking user account information if we're going to go to that extent. So another example might be that we want to log all requests that are coming through. So um, in any case, these are known as cross-cutting concerns, and these are not the only ones that we might have, but they're, they're ones that um, are pretty common. There's really two ways to handle cross-cutting concerns, um, filters and message handlers. We want to use message handlers when you want to apply the action to all HTTP requests, which is what we want to do, or filters when you want to apply it to only requests that are dispatched to the controller or action where the filter is applied. So we're going to actually be doing the first here. We're going to be using message handlers. So over at www.asp.net you can read a little bit more about uh, Web API and uh, here's some information from that site about HTTP client message handlers. So message handler is a class that receives an HTTP request and returns an HTTP response. And it's typically you can have a series of these chained together and the first one receives the request, does some processing, and then can go on to the next handler. At some point the response is created and goes back up the chain. So again, at any one of these layers we could block things and send it back. So the idea here is that this code will sit in front of um, our web API so it'll never even get to the controller. It'll do the checking first. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and implement that now. And to start with, we're going to make sure that we actually have our website up and working. So here's our DHC client that we're going to use to test this with. And it's just starting up our web application, our web server. Okay, so if I do a post or, or, I'm sorry, if I do a get um, on this, it, it brings back a person. So it appears to be working just fine. So what we want to do is we want to block that request if the API key is not provided. And how you manage your API keys is up to you. There's many different ways you could do it. You could hand those out to each individual. You could hand it out to companies or organizations. All kinds of ways you could do it. All right. So let's jump back over to Visual Studio. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is stop this from running. So we're not running that anymore. And we're going to come over here and create a folder called Message Handlers. 
And this will just be a, an organizational step that we do to make sure that we can keep our message handling code together. So message handlers. And in that, we want to create a new class called um, API key message handler. And so we're going to add a new class. And it is going to be called API key message handler. And we are going to, um, this is going to be subclass from a class called delegating handler. And we're going to have several using statements we need to include. So I'm just going to go ahead and include these right now. So we want system dot net dot http we want system dot threading system dot threading dot tasks and system dot net all right and you'll notice delegating handler was covered there. Inside of this, we want to create um, now where you store this will be up to you. I'm going to put it in here as a constant, which is simply going to be the API key to check. And it's just going to be some random set of characters. You could do this, you could have a very specific way of organizing these keys. You could have some company name followed by a date, all kinds of different ways. So you you would decide. There's nothing, there's nothing special about this. Um, so I just made up a bunch of random characters basically. And then we want to override a method Called, ta uh, called send async. So this is how we do this. So protected override async task HTTP response message send async. And the parameters are going to be HTTP request message. And that's going to be an HTTP request message. And then a cancellation token. We'll need that as well as a parameter. Okay, so now we're on to determining if it's a valid key or not. And I'll explain this code as we go. So here's our valid key variable. This is just going to tell us whether we have a valid key or not. So we're going to set this to false. Remember, this is the, this is the uh, message handler that's going to be sitting in front of um, any request that comes in. Okay, and I enumerable on string. We're going to get back a list of headers. Okay. And sorry about that. Got some free advertising there for parallels backup. You may wonder how I do this. I've got Parallels running on a Mac, which is, gives me the best of both worlds for development tasks. All right, so we're going to check to see if the API key exists. Check API key exists, and that's going to be equal to HTTP HTTP. 
request message dot headers dot try get values. So this is going to go and try to get our key that we define. Okay. So that will check to see if it's there. And so what we'll do is we'll say if that exists, then we're going to continue on. And we need to check then to see if the key that we, we now that we know the key is there, then we can go ahead and do a search to see if. the API key to check if it matches that. If that's the case, then we are going to say valid key is true. We got a good key. Okay. And then if we don't have a valid key, so we don't have a valid key, now we want to make sure that we send back a, a forbidden response. So we are going to return HTTP request message and we're going to create a response and it is going to be HTTP status code forbidden. And we'll give a message there, invalid API key. And then, um, so that'll return out immediately. Otherwise, we want to go ahead and get our response from wherever we were intending it to go. Because at this point, we've cleared the, the um, check. So we will call our base class. Passing the cancellation token. Now this will take care of the, the chaining that we talked about, if it's necessary. And then we will return the response back. So this takes care of that layer um, of security so that the response can go to the go on up the chain all the way into our controller. If it makes it that far, we could have another message handler that did other security checking um, if we wanted to do that. And that will that will take care of it. Okay. All right. Now, in the global ASAX, we need to make a change to actually get this handler invoked. So first, we'll need a couple of usings on this as well. We need to be able to pull in the message handlers. And we will do another global configuration and we will do configuration message handlers and we're going to add a new message handler new API key message handler that gets it in the chain so that it will be called whenever their requests come in. Okay? And that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. So again, um, this is the, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look for this key with this value 
and if it can't find the key or if the value doesn't exist it should fail so let's go ahead and run this now and now let's try our request and it comes back and gives us a 403 forbidden and it says invalid API key so how do we get around that Well, we need to add the header in the header we have to add the key and the value so let's add the key so the key is API key and then let's just put in some value so let's just put in ABC and send that and it still comes back and gives us an invalid, which is good, because it's looking for this specific value. So let's add that, and now send it. And now we're back in business. We're all good. So the header has to contain this. There, there has to be a new header called API key with this specific value. Okay, so if you had a set of these, a set of values that you wanted to hand out, then you check those. Um, but this is a simple way to just check to make sure that an API key is being provided. Now this is pretty easy to, for people to get these headers and to grab these API keys. And API keys get out there on the internet and people can use them. So this is not real, real tight security. But it's a start. It gets us at least some level of um, people just calling us with denial of service attacks again they could get the key somehow and if they did they could they could come after us okay so that's a simple way and we will be looking at other ways to make our site even more secure using user account logins things like that and we'll cover the authorization and authentication pieces so I hope that was useful to you uh, please keep watching and there'll be more coming on security.